We do not want Battlefield to go Milsim. Never, ever. That should not happen at all. Because that's going to ruin the franchise. So many of the fans will go away from the game. So many. I will be one of them. I am actually doing this for a living. And I'm going to be literally leaving the game. If anything like that happens ever. What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. So yesterday I was surfing Twitter and I came across something, some news that can be both very satisfying and very horrifying at the same time. EA is now hiring ex-military people, aka veterans, to help them actually in the process of making the next Battlefield. So there are people out there, as you guys probably know, they want Battlefield to embrace the Milsim part of the industry, which is something most of us Battlefield players are absolutely against. The first thing that came to my mind when I first saw this was, oh my God, don't tell me that EA is going to do this. I mean, there are so many things that these people can bring to the game without actually making it a Milsim. There are so many experiences. Uh, they can help in so many aspects in the battlefield and vehicles. As I said, so many aspects. But if you want to make the battlefield that close to real military, for example, you start implementing the recoil pattern of real guns into the game, that's going to just ruin the Battlefield franchise. And that's something the Battlefield franchise has always avoided, becoming a milsim. Back in the day, like, milsim games were not even a thing. Like, Battlefield Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, but we didn't have to worry about those kind of stuff. But nowadays, milsims are all over the place, and apparently, there are people who actually want Battlefield to embrace that Milsim side. And yeah, that's going to be everything that we're going to talk about today. We're going to see the good sides and bad sides of having some veterans in the Battlefield program and having them hired by EA. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to get to know these people. There's actually an article about this. We're going to read the article as well. Let's see if we can actually save Battlefield from becoming a Milsim and just dying forever. However, before we start, if you enjoy the content, if you find it helpful, uh, if you think the information is up to date here, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you are a constant viewer of the channel, it only takes one click to subscribe. So go ahead and do that so you won't miss out on the future videos. With all that said, guys, let's get things started. So there's a Hiring Our Heroes, aka HOH program going on. And apparently EA is not the only company that's a fellow partner of this program. There are other companies. To be honest, it was the first time that I heard about it, that there is some kind of a program like that. I didn't even know it exists. But yeah, there's a, there's a first time for everything, right? The article is actually about two military veterans hired by EA, and apparently they're going to help in the process of making the next Battlefield game. So there are just a few sentences that are really important to us from the article. The rest is just getting to know these two people. But it goes like this. Transitioning out of the military and into civilian life can be a struggle for many of its members. The military has become embedded into their lives, both personally and professionally, and the idea of leaving can cause anxiety and uncertainty. This is why EA is a proud host company with the Hiring Our Heroes, aka HOH program, which helps bridge the gap between the civilian military divide within the business community. The service provides three primary tools to accomplish this mission, hosting hiring events, running fellowship programs for veterans to gain hands-on experience, and providing education and networking opportunities. Recently, two remarkable hires have made their journey from military life into EA, bringing with them a wealth of knowledge and skills that will improve our company and provide them with a pathway into our industry. By the way, the pictures that you're watching now are the pictures of these two people uh, that was provided in the article itself. However, the last paragraph of this article is actually what's making it interesting. Aaron and Madison, these are the two people that were hired by EA, are already making significant strides within the Battlefield team, showcasing exemplary passion and skill that promises to elevate our teams and world-class games. And we are thrilled to see where they go from here. So these two people are actually participating in making the next Battlefield game. And this is where everything starts from. So as you guys probably know, Battlefield has never been a milsim, and I hope it will never be. But Battlefield has always been somehow accurate when it comes to weapons and just generally military stuff. It's always been accurate, at least in the, in the past days, like in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3, even Battlefield 1, things have been so cool. Back in the day when Battlefield 3 had bullet drop, 
So many game developers did not even know what that means. So the game is relatively accurate when it comes to military stuff, but it's never been a milsim. And having military people helping you make the next Battlefield game can be struggling exactly because of that. You have to exactly know where these people can help you. We don't want real life recoil patterns and visual recoils and things like that into the game. I'm pretty sure these guys can help a lot. As an example, these people probably know what it feels like to be near a explosion, like a grenade explosion or some sort of explosion, like a tank shooting or I don't know, some artillery shooting, right? They can actually let people at DICE know what it feels like to stand close to a tank that shoots. And uh, for example, the sound effect for the soldier next to the tank should be like this. And also, for example, the reload animations can be pretty much affected by the experience of these people. Like they do know how actual reloading works they have pov cameras most of them record themselves while in combat and they just re-watch that recorded video there are so many things to be learned here based on those um, like body cams they can actually let dice know that they don't need to make a map as big as hell and they don't put any cover in it for 128 players maybe 64 is enough these people can let them know where to place covers these people can let dice know how they can give us back the leaning mechanism where you could lean behind cover something that we had in battlefield 4 or you could basically just peek behind cover not like leaning but remember you could peek behind cover it was not like a lean it was like you aimed and the soldier would go into a leaning aiming situation where you could just shoot behind cover while being behind cover that was a pretty cool aspect of battlefield 4 in my opinion even battlefield 3 had that but we don't have it in the modern battlefield games and these people can really help with those things and there are a lot of more things that these people can help with but when it comes to battlefield becoming a milsim that's the red line that is where we should draw the line i saw a video of enders a few days ago, speaking about an article from someone who literally has no idea what Battlefield is about, saying that Battlefield needs to embrace the Milsim side. Listen, what Battlefield is struggling with these days has nothing to do with becoming a Milsim or not. We've got irresponsible people sitting there at EA and DICE deciding where they should take this game to and the paths that they lead us into are wrong. Like 128 players was something completely like insane to think of in a Battlefield game. They couldn't pull it off. They knew from the beginning that they could not pull it off. But they did it anyway because they promised the game to have an 128 player game mode. Things like that are destroying Battlefield. Battlefield actually needs X-Dice developers who developed Battlefield 3 and 4. And also Battlefield veterans, not people like Shroud, you know. You don't have to give money to Shroud to come and say that you should do this and that about Battlefield and then do the exact opposite. First of all, you didn't even listen to those people. And second of all, Shroud is really not in a place to set the future for Battlefield games because he's just an FPS player, not a Battlefield player. You need to be a Battlefield player to know what Battlefield means. In and out, it's core. The core Battlefield experience has to be taken from the Battlefield veterans and the ex-DICE developers. We literally do not need military veterans for doing that. And I'm not saying not hiring them. I'm just saying that DICE needs to use them where they need to be used. We do not want Battlefield to go Milsim. Never, ever. That should not happen at all. Because that's going to ruin the franchise. So many of the fans will go away from the game. So many. I will be one of them. I am actually doing this for a living. And I'm going to be literally leaving the game if anything like that happens ever. And I don't think DICE can be that stupid to actually do that. But you know, we've seen a lot from DICE, man. We've seen a lot from DICE and I have to warn them. I have to do my part. And I encourage all the content creators and streamers to come and do exactly the same because we do not really want Battlefield to become a Milsim game. So what I suggest DICE to do is maybe hiring some ex-DICE developers, people who were making the best Battlefield titles ever. Or, at least if they don't want to do that, just look back at Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. If you're making a modern Battlefield title, those games are the perfect examples. They are actually Battlefield. They hold core values of Battlefield games, and they are literally just franchise defining. They define the Battlefield franchise, those games. Go back, take a look at them, take notes, maybe even consider playing them, because most of the DICE developers 
I'm pretty sure they've never played Battlefield 4. They've never played Battlefield 3. I don't even know what Battlefield Bad Company 2 looks like. Most of them are exactly this way. Because it's impossible to have played Battlefield 4 and 3 and come with the idea of having specialists and having like 128 game modes. It's impossible. That is what you should do for making the next Battlefield title. And for making Battlefield great again, you have to look back at the successful examples of Battlefield. We've got Battlefield 3 and 4, perfect examples for making a rich Battlefield game set in the modern timeline. I encourage you guys to also go down in the comment section and let me know what you think about Battlefield becoming a milsim, EA hiring ex-military people. Uh, I want to know what you think about this. I want you to tell me how they can be helpful and how can DICE actually make use of these people without ruining the franchise. And just let me know if you guys actually agree for Battlefield to embrace the milsim part of the industry or you're just completely against it, just like me. So yeah, go down in the comment section. We'll have a discussion down there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you liked it. And thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, stay cool.